Um, well, it's, it's, it's precisely, um, you know, as I've always maintained, it's not a question of gold going up, it's a question of paper currencies going down. Um, and that continues to be the background to it. Um, but there are other factors. Um, you've got um, a very, very strong savings, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, savings ethos, if you like, in, in China, where households put aside on average something like 35% of their income. I mean, that's, that's huge, $6 trillion. And you've got to think where that's going to go. It can't go into foreign currencies if they wanted to. Property markets shut off. Um, and uh, it's going into bank accounts. The same banks who, by regulation, are required to offer gold accounts to their customers. I mean, there's a minimum amount you put in, but the minimum amount is less than $100. So um, I would expect to see uh, more and more of those gold, gold accounts um, you know, just accumulating. Uh, and the banks which run them, um, you know, I... It, it, these these I, I, are not allocated accounts by any stretch of the imagination. They're unallocated accounts, but it does mean that the banks that offer them have got to have uh, some decent gold cover. So they're in the market getting what they can. So that's keeping things short. Central banks understand what we're talking about. They won't admit it, but they do understand what we're talking about. And they want to get out of dollars and get into gold because... They know that gold is money and dollars are credit. And what's happening to credit? The value of that credit is bound up in the faith, if you like, uh, of um, and trust in the U.S. government. Um, what's happening to that trust? I mean, that answers the question, the relationship between credit and money. Um, on top of that, I think that um, the situation, if you like, of investing institutions in uh, financial markets is very, very interesting. Uh, when I first became a stockbroker, it was normal to have um, an exposure of roughly 10% to 15% of your assets in gold or gold proxies. I mean, mining shares or something like that. Um, this was the protection, if you like. And indeed, um, if you go back to the 30s, they would say that a gentleman's portfolio was comprised of gilts and gold. You know, no equities in there at all. Um, now, we've moved away from that. And I think that the average um, uh, exposure, um, if you take the entire investment management industry, exposure to gold is probably not much more than 1%. So in other words, they haven't bought it. Um, as things develop, um, and you know, you've got this huge, great valuation disparity between uh, the S and P and, um, and bond yields. That I think in a recession is going to close, and it's not going to close by bond yields falling. It's going to close by um, uh, uh, equity uh, prices falling. And we've seen we're seeing sort of a few shaky things happening recently. I mean, the S and P is basically what, sort of five or six or seven tech stocks led by NVIDIA. Um, NVIDIA had a bit of a rocky time last night um, declaring their results, and uh, the stock got hit pretty badly. I haven't seen how it's trading today. But you can see that the sort of cracks, if you like, in this, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of high-tech, um, you know, you sort of huge, great corporations at the top of the S&P, you know, their sort of their valuations are stalling. Let's put it that way. Now, when that goes into reverse, what does the fund manager do? Well, he's going to sort of start thinking. I mean, he might sort of think it's a good idea to buy gold, but he's got a problem because a gold, gold, physical gold, is not a regulated investment, and he will have his compliance officer down on his back if he goes out and buys gold. Why are you doing this? You know, do you realise that this is not a regulated investment, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. You know, you can see. That they tend to steer clear of it. Now, they can get around this by ETFs. And so far, um, basically, ETFs, you know, the, the um, flow in ETFs in the West has been basically uh, sell, sell, sell. And, you know, the signs it's stabilizing, but they're not really buying ETFs um, on, 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 on balance. Um, and then there are mines. Um, and mines are, you know, fascinating because there's been no research, really, conducted by the big houses, they've all cut back on their, on their mine research. 
So that's going to be a, um, a dramatic market. But, you know, we have this thing with gold exposure, not much more than 1%, if that. I mean, that's got to get up to 2, 3, 4, 5%. Where's it going to come from? Well, the answer, basically, we're seeing already with, as I described earlier, the dollar is uh, trade weighted is going into a death cross. Well, at the same time, gold is, um, you know, it's found support at its 55-day moving average, and it's knocking on new high ground. I mean, it's fascinating how the buyers are in there at $2,500, and they try and cap it at $2,525 to 30 it's going to break out of there. And when it breaks out of there, it'll probably run very, very quickly. So, you know, this is, we are on the cusp of something I think very, very interesting as far as gold as a whole is concerned. Now, as far as silver is concerned, that is also very interesting, but for rather different reasons. Um, there was, um, I mean, various people picked up on a story that Samsung have got a new solid state battery, which uses silver. Uh, and, and not that uh, very, very dangerous lithium. Um, uh, it's got, I mean, it's got the range. It's not so heavy. I mean, it's got everything to recommend it. Rapid charging, yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. You can get something like 600 miles and 10 minutes charge. I mean, you know, whatever the figures are. I mean, this that makes the whole of the um, EV thing sensible. But... There isn't the infrastructure to cover those a huge charging currents. That's going to take time to put in. But nonetheless, China will copy Samsung. They will have the same technology very, very rapidly. They will put in the infrastructure. And we will be finding that these Chinese cars, even with 100% tariff, are fiercely competitive compared with anything coming out of anywhere else. This is the reality of the situation. It's going to mean that silver, which has been in supply deficit for the last four years, according to the Silver Institute, silver has got the potential really, I think, to easily double from here. Um, whether it does or not, we'll see. But you can see that with a rising gold price, uh, silver is likely to rise very rapidly as well. And I think the gold-silver ratio will fall from current, what, 83, 84, whatever it is, easily down to below 60 um, on on what is developing, a mixture of monetary uh, the monetary situation with the collapse in credit and, um, uh, you know, physical demand for silver, mainly uh, from Asia, which is where all the action is.